so I'm just going to go back to this project that we created earlier uh, called Learning Threading. You can create a new project or just go back to that one. And uh, in the source folder, I'm going to right click and go to new. And I'm going to create a new package. And we can call this package com.jobready.producer.consumer. And it doesn't really matter what name you give it, but that's just a name that I kind of chose on the fly. So right click and go to new class. And I'm going to create a class called producer. And just hit finish. And I'm going to create another class. Right click, go to new class. And this one is going to be called consumer. And hit finish. So we've got the producer and we've got the consumer. And I'm also going to create another class. Right click, go to new. And uh, this is going to be called application. And this is actually going to have our main method, the starting point for this example. So select it there and just, just hit finish. So here in the, the classes producer, this is actually going to be a thread. So we want to implement runnable. Okay, and hover your mouse and just add the unimplemented method, which is of course the run method. And I'm going to do the same thing for the consumer class. So you can, like I said, threads, I want you to think of them as tasks. So uh, we've got two tasks here. We've got the producer task and we've got the consumer task. And we're going to be executing these tasks uh, in this application class. So again, what is a producer consumer pattern all about? Well, it's used to separate tasks that need to get done from the actual execution of those tasks. The producer consumer pattern facilitates or, or what's the correct word I'm looking for? Orchestrates, all right, orchestrates these two t uh, tasks to run properly. And it's really a fancy name, you know, the producer consumer. Don't let it intimidate you. It's quite simple once you realize that almost all work that gets done around you in the real world uh, uses the producer consumer pattern, right? So, for example, at a restaurant, a cook prepares a meal, and once it's ready, the cook places the food on the order shelf. A server then comes up and picks up the food and uh, takes it to the, the, you know, serves it to the customers. The cook can be seen as a producer because he is producing the food, whereas the server can be seen as a consumer, okay? Both the cook and the server share a resource, which is the order shelf, right? This is the shelf where uh, the, the cook is going to place the food on top of. If the order shelf gets filled up, the cook will wait to, to place more things onto it until the server uh, has removed some dishes off of that table or off of that shelf. Similarly, the server can wait at that shelf if it's empty, right? There's no food on the order shelf, so the, the, the server is going to wait there until more dishes are prepared and placed onto that shelf before he gets to uh, do what he's supposed to do which is serve those dishes. So the code that I have here, the producer and the consumer, we're going to be going over an example to demonstrate the usage of the producer-consumer pattern. And for this example, consider that, you know, we have a website where people ask questions and those questions need to be answered. So people are, you know, sending us questions left and right and those questions need to be answered by someone. So we've got two tasks. We've got the uh, reading of questions and we've got the writing of answers. So the producer is where the questions are being produced. So that could mean, you know, getting the questions that people post on the website, saving them in a database and, you know, reading it from there. Uh, you know, some task of processing those questions that people are asking. And the consumer is where the questions need to be answered. Let's go to the producer first because, you know, it makes sense for those questions to be produced first. And uh, outside of this run method, I'm actually going to define some attributes of this class. The questions that get asked on the website, we could just say that they get stored into a list, okay? And to make things simple, I'm just going to have these as integers. So we'll just call it question list, okay? And we're going to initialize it to the value of null. 
So rather than actually coming up with questions, I think it's just easier for us to be dealing with integers. But you know, think of these as you know, question number one, question number two, question number three, and so on. You could do the Control Shift O to bring in the list uh, import, and I'm also going to set a limit for the number of questions that get queued up. Okay, and uh, that's going to be a final int limit variable, and I'll just set this to to be five. So when we have five questions that need to be answered, uh, we're not going to accept any more questions until uh, some of the questions have have uh, been answered, and you know we've made room to to allow more questions to be produced. And then I'm also going to uh, create another variable uh, of type int, and we're just going to call this question number. So this producer is going to have a uh, a constructor. Let's do producer. And it accepts as an argument to it the list of questions. So we'll just call it question list. And we're going to assign that to this question list. And then going down further, um, I'll have a method for reading the questions. Okay, this is what it's, it all comes down to is reading a particular question that comes up. So we're going to define a method called read question. And we'll pass in an argument. And this is going to be the question number. And then in the body of this run method, I'm actually going to be calling this read question. But we'll get to that in just a second. So here we can have a while loop that says that if the question list, uh, if, if its size has reached the limit, then what we want to do is we're just going to print out, we're going to print out uh, questions have piled up. Right, so we need to wait for answers. Because remember, we can't accept more than five questions at a time. So if the question list has reached that size, um, we're going to you know, print that you know, questions have piled up. But that's not enough. We're not, we, we can't just print this out and say, you know, we're waiting. We actually need to tell uh, this thread, because think of this as a task. We need, this, we need to tell this task to wait. Okay. And the way we do that is we have to call the wait method. And another thing is that this is a shared resource. The question list is actually going to be a shared resource. This same question list is going to be uh, consumed in the consumer when we get to that. So this is a shared resource across the producer and the consumer. It's a shared re resource across two threads. The producer is going to be adding questions to this list. Right, and the consumer is going to be taking those questions off of that list and clearing them away to make room for new questions. Okay, uh, so this that's the idea. The producer is adding to this list up to the limit of five, and then it has to wait until the consumer uh, answers those questions and then removes them off of that the shared resource called question list. So remember what I told you uh, when it comes to shared resources, we want to make sure we uh, use the synchronized keyword. So I'm actually going to synchronize this uh, block of code, right? When we're dealing with the, when we're checking the size of the list, we are actually accessing the list and we want to, you know, make changes to it. We're going to make sure that everything is synchronized. So I'm going to add the synchronized keyword and synchronize on what? We need to specify the object to lock on. All right, now I can define an object up here. I can just call it object my object is equal to new object. You know, I could use this object right here and use that as, as the lock, right? But I'm not going to do that. We have this question list as the shared resource across the producer and the consumer threads. So I'm just going to use this question list object. Why not? Use that inside of this uh, synchronized lock. And I'm going to take this code and dump it into this synchronized block. So after printing that, you know, the questions have piled up, wait for answers, I'm actually literally going to wait. And the way you do that is you could do question list dot wait. All right, this is a special method. It belongs to the object class. That means that every single object that you create, it has a, a common parent, right? The object class is a common parent of all objects. So this wait method belongs to the object class, and we can actually invoke this method 
and say that, hey, this question list is, uh, we're, we're waiting. This synchronized block has been put on wait, and we're passing on the control to any other thread that wants to access this question list, okay? And it's giving an error here. Hover your mouse. It's saying we need to, um, you know, handle the in interrupted exception. I'm just going to add that to the throws uh, declaration, and we're going to let something else handle this exception if this method ends up throwing that interrupted exception. So this is just checking for whether the size has reached its limit, and then it's going to wait until it gets notified to continue. Okay, so it's going to wait until it gets notified. So it's looking for some kind of notification. I'm going to explain to you in just a second how that works. But outside of this, I'm going to have another synchronized block that is going to be adding uh, a new question to the list. So we're going to use the same block object, which is going to be the question list itself. And we could just, you know, do a system.println and say, you know, we've got a new question. And I'm just going to add the question number uh, as part of this uh, sentence that gets printed to the console. And then the real work actually gets done here. We're going to add this question uh, to the question list. So we could just do add and then give the question number like that. And again, the question number is right here. That's being passed uh, to, uh, you know, as part of the argument to this read question method. And we're going to be invoking this read question here in the run method uh, in just a second. So after the question has been added, I, I just want the thread to sleep for just 100 milliseconds or so, just so that it doesn't immediately, you know, add everything in one shot. It's going to be very quick so I just want to slow it down a bit uh, to make it a more practical example. And then after that, I want to uh, notify that the question has been added to the question list. And how do you do that? Well, we're just going to do question list dot notify. And what this is going to do is it's going to notify the threads that are waiting, all right, that are waiting for the notification that they should wake up. And that's what this notify method does. It wakes up those threads that are waiting so that those threads can continue processing. It relinquishes the control on this question list object. So these wait and notify, these are two new methods that I introduced you in this uh, lecture. And these are used to do exactly what they sound like, right? If you want to pass control to another block of code, you use the dot wait. Now, this is the interesting part. This producer is a thread. Okay, that's how I want you to think of it. It's a task. It's a thread. You can think of it as a thread. Now, and we're telling this thread to wait on this question list object. So what happens next? Well, another thread is going to take over. And what is that other thread? Well, that's the consumer thread. So at this point, when we call this wait, we've reached the limit. The number of questions have piled up in the question list, and we can't really add more questions to it. So some other thread is going to come in and answer those questions. And then I'll show you how to do that in the consumer. It's going to answer the question and remove that question out of the question list to make room. And then as part of that, it's going to notify that, hey, the other thread can take over now. I'm done doing what I'm doing. So we'll look at that in just a moment when we work on the consumer task. But this producer task, when it's reached its limit, it's pretty much done and waiting for the questions to be removed off of that list. So if it's confusing at this moment, don't worry. It's going to make a lot more sense uh, when I work on the consumer, and you'll be able to connect the dots together. There's also a notify all method uh, that's used to notify all the threads that may be waiting. But we're just going to stick with the, the one that is related to this question list. Anything that is waiting for this question list lock to be released is going to be notified. And it's also important to realize that this wait and notify method can only be called inside of a synchronized block. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So there we go. We're done with the read question method. And this is part of the producer, right? We're, we're really producing the questions here. And we don't need this object anymore. I'm just going to get rid of that. And in the run method now, we're actually going to invoke read question. And I'm going to increment question number 
So after this question number has been passed to read question, it's going to increment it because of these two plus signs. It throws an interrupted exception, so I'm just going to surround that with a try catch. Let's just get rid of this, the code inside of the catch. We don't need that. And we don't want this just to run once. We're just going to surround this with a while loop so that it does this indefinitely. So this try and catch block, I'm just going to cut that out and paste it inside of the while loop so this continues to happen until we close, the, close our program. So it's going to continuously create questions or, or produce questions. That's what this guy does, the producer. So to save time, I'm just going to pretty much copy all of this code and dump it into the producer. Um, but we're going to have to rename a few things and fix it up, so not a big deal. We'll do that uh, quickly. So this uh, class is, of course, the consumer class. And the uh, constructor should be named appropriately. And we don't need these uh, this final int or this uh, question number variable as part of the class. We do need this question list because that's the same list that's going to be shared across the consumer and the producer. And that's passed into the constructor of the producer as well as the consumer. And I'll show you how to do that in the application class when we get there. Now, this is, of course, we're not going to be reading the question. for we're, Here, we're going to be answering the question. This is the consumer. So the producer you know, creates the questions right, or reads or questions that people are submitting or whatever. And the consumer is going to answer those questions. So we're going to just type in answer question. And it's still going to be a synchronized block on the question list. And I'm going to change this to um, question list. If it's, if it's uh, empty, we can use the is empty method. If the question list is empty, I'm going to print out that you know no questions to answer. Waiting for producer to get questions. OK? And we're just going to wait here. So again, what is it going to wait on? Well, it's going to wait. So again, what is this wait really? So again, what does the wait mean at this point? Well, it's going to wait because the question list is empty. It needs to be populated. So new questions need to come into this list. So that's why we put this on wait so that some other thread that is responsible for populating that question list can do its job. So in here, uh, right at the start, I'm just going to do a, a thread dot sleep. And, you know, it takes uh, longer to answer questions than it is to produce them, right? So let's just say we have simple yes, no answers. And, you know, we're just going to uh, sleep for five seconds to simulate that it takes about five seconds uh, to answer answer question. And then I'm going to print to the console here. We're just going to call it answered question. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a question list dot remove and remove the uh, the question at the zeroth index position. The remove method of a list uh, doesn't only just remove something from the list. It also returns that value. Whatever it is, it returns it. And that's what we'll, we'll also be able to print that removed value as part of this print line statement. And we're removing those things from the zeroth index position. So what does that mean? That means that we're always removing things from the front of the list. And this kind of simulates a queue, right? Like if you're in a line, let's say at a grocery store, you're in front of that line. So you should be removed from that line first, right? And that's the same idea here. Think of this as a queue. We're removing the first element in that list because it is you know, the oldest element. That was the first element that was put into the list, and it gets removed. And, and that's how we proceed in uh, getting rid of all of the questions that need to be answered in the order in which they were inserted into that list. And here we're not producing any questions, so I'm just going to get rid of this. The next line is the notify method. So we need to notify the threads that are waiting, OK? so. The consumer is about answering questions, right? That's what the, this method does. This method answers the question. So it runs in its own thread. The consumer will have its own thread, and the producer will have its own thread. So this notify method is going to notify that, hey, we've just answered a question. And so the thread that was waiting can now resume. 
and that of course is going to be on the producer side so the consumer here is going to notify the producer that hey I've answered the question so two threads running producer and consumer and you're going to see in just a second when I uh, you know call on upon both of these threads uh, and start them in the application class which we'll get to in just a second and then in the run method this is the execution of the task right for this uh, multi-threaded application so the consumer is the task and we're defining what the task is supposed to be in this uh, in this method called answer question so we're gonna invoke that answer question here instead of you know read question and this is not gonna have an, any argument we shouldn't need an argument to answer the question here let's get rid of this one so we've got the producer which is producing the questions and we've got a consumer which is answering those questions now in the application class right in our main thread uh, I'm just going to initialize an array list and we could just call this uh, this could be just a list uh, of integers again I didn't use s sentences or strings to save time I don't want to be typing up random questions here let's just think of these as a list of questions and we're just treating them as integers and I'm gonna call it question list is equal to new array list of type integer and just do the control shift O to bring in the array list uh, from the java.util and then we're gonna have two threads so the first thread we'll call it t1 is a new thread and as an argument to this we're gonna uh, pass in the producer so we're gonna create an instance of the producer we're gonna do new producer and pass in the question list object okay so this question list is being created here in the main method and that same question list is going to be passed in the producer as well as the consumer so I'm just gonna copy the same line of code and paste it down here this is gonna be t2 and instead of producer this is actually going to be consumer so we're passing the same list of questions uh, well to the same list the same data structure the shared data structure to the producer which is going to populate that question list uh, and then the consumer is going to have access to that same list and be able to remove those questions from the list so we got t1 and t2 two separate threads each responsible for doing separate work but there's a shared data here which is a question list and then to start this application I'm going to do t1.start that starts the first thread and t2.start and that starts the second thread so now if I hit play you can see how uh, things are printed out here so there we go we've got new question 0 1 2 3 and then we've also been able to answer the question so these these Th these lines are being produced this is, this is coming from the producer and this is coming from the uh, consumer okay the consumer is answering the question the producer is producing those questions or, or reading those uh, you know from the fr from some database or whatever wherever our questions are being saved on a website or whatever so here notice it got to a point where it says no question to answer waiting for a producer to get questions so once it answered all these questions uh, the producer hadn't produced any questions yet uh, you know so that's why it was waiting for producer and it relinquished control and gave it over to the producer uh, to produce more questions and that's what that what happened here and uh, you know here's another example it says it's saying questions have piled up wait for answers so here the producer uh, wanted to you know put more questions into this list you know this question list but it's it was maxed out right remember our limit was five questions so we tried to put in five questions but it couldn't do that because we have that limit that's what why this is being printed uh, questions have piled up wait for answers so the consumer should have answered those questions and one, once it did then you know it moved on to whatever it has to do so hopefully you get the idea this is a shared data structure uh, that's being you know used by the producer and the consumer the producer adds questions to this question list and the consumer removes those questions from the question list and just prints out that you know those questions have been answered and inter-thread communication is happening here because you know we have these uh, wait and notify methods okay so really quickly if I hover my mouse here on the wait notice what it says it's pretty straightforward it's saying causes the current thread to wait until 
another thread invokes the notify method, right? Or the notify all method. These wait and notify do exactly what they sound like. So hopefully you get the idea behind the producer consumer pattern. It's a pattern that's used to separate tasks from their actual execution, right? So we've got two tasks, the producer and the consumer, and we've, we're separating these two tasks and we're using this shared list, which you can you know think of this as the list of orders that need to be executed or the list of whatever tasks that need to be completed. That could be in this shared list. And one thread could be putting uh, tasks onto this list while another thread is removing those tasks from that list when it completes those tasks. So you can think of this question list as a container to store the things that need to get done. And these two, the producer and the consumer, takes care of those things. Uh, one of them is you know, generating those things and inserting them onto this, onto this uh, list, and the other one is taking them off of that list. And that's how the task's execution is managed using this shared data structure. So this is known as the producer-consumer design pattern, and it's used all over the place in multi-threading. Now we use these uh, this wait and notify methods. Um, these are still primitive approaches to inter-thread communication. I recommend that you kind of stay away from them as much as you can and use concurrent utilities that Java provides. And we're going to get into a data structure in the next uh, lecture that is going to be the concurrent friendly data structure to store uh, tasks that need to be done. Here we're just using an array list to manage that. And not only are we using an array list, it really doesn't suit the kind of work that we're trying to accomplish here. An array list is just, you know, a container to store elements, uh, multiple elements. Order of insertion is maintained with the array list, but the way we're using it here is more of like a queue. So in the next lecture, I'm going to introduce you to a concurrent version of the queue uh, data structure, and it's known as the array blocking queue, and it comes from the java.util.concurrent package, and that will be more correct for this kind of a use case, with you know, with the uh, producer-consumer pattern, and concurrent friendly, and you won't have to use these wait and notify methods to to manage the interaction between two threads or multiple threads. So stay tuned. I'll see you in the next lecture.